Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me in another video. So as you can tell based on the title, today we are talking about Celine Fall Winter 2024 Men's. So this is the collection called Symphony Fantastique. And is this Eddie Slaman's last show at Celine? So I normally, when I've been talking about Celine, I generally focus on the women's wear side. However, I actually feel like when it comes to men's wear, I think this is where Eddie's true heart is. Remember, Celine did not have a menswear line and now it does as well as new other categories of products personally what i think he does best when it comes to fashion is i always love the products that i think can be unisex i also really love the handbags but i thought in today's video we talk about the three major themes we are seeing in this collection and we'll finish off with my five favorite looks and perhaps the show is messaging something to us whether or not eddie slaman is leaving celine so this collection it's shot in the mojave desert now one thing i just need to note is a lot of these celine collections. Mostly he's been doing these sorts of films since the pandemic. He's had some live shows. With a lot of these films, it actually tells you where and when these films have taken place. This film was shot January and February of 2024. There was a lot of speculation that his contract ended this year and you could see some of the dating of some of the like product launches and certain collections they were shot last year in 2023 but here we have a collection shot in 2024 as well as a few other ads that have been shot in 2024 is he still at celine who knows we're never really going to know until lvmh or celine tells us i feel like there's a lot going on at lvmh there's a lot not just with celine even if you just look at the hierarchy of lvmh a lot of things have been changing very quickly recently but anyways that's not the topic of this video but but here we have this film. We see a series of helicopters flying in. They drop a Celine jukebox and we see this line of Cadillac cars driving through the desert. And then a young person is in a suit with a wide broom hat and these sunglasses. It is very important for me to really set the tone by talking about the music and every Celine collection. I would say there's sort of a significance with the music or whether the musicians are a muse or just they're kind of taking us back to a certain time period. The first thing I want to talk about is the music. So this I'm just taking from the Celine YouTube here. In 1969, Bernstein describes the symphony fantastique as the first psychedelic symphony ever composed more than 100 years before the dawn of the movement in the late 1960s. Those sounds you're hearing come from the first psychedelic symphony in history, the first musical description ever made of a trip, written 130 odd years before before the Beatles, way back in 1830 by the brilliant French composer Hector Berlioz. He called it Symphony Fantastique or Fantastic Symphony. And fantastic it is in every sense of the word, including psychedelic. Eddie Slaman discovered the Symphony Fantastique at age 11 and became passionate about the romantic musical piece by the young Berlioz. Hector Berlioz was only 26 years old when he was in an obsessive relationship with English actress Harriet Smithson which led him to compose the symphony on December 5th, 1830 in Paris. Now I'm sure that any of you who has ever had a crush on someone who didn't return your feeling will understand that passionate melody perfectly and you can easily see how a lovesick musician could become obsessed by it. And if you understand that, you're ready to hear the symphony. And he's quoting Leonard Bernstein here, May 1969. Berlioz defined his musical drama, Symphony Fantastique, written between February and April 1830 as an immense instrumental composition of a new genre composed in the midst of the Romantic period. Hector Berlioz excels in the specialization of his orchestration. So this is a little bit different in comparison to a lot of other Celine shows. We'd see him sort of make reference to his musician friends, be it the Libertines or the White Stripes or LCD sound system, creating collections that were reminiscent of certain periods, be it the Y2K or the 2000s indie rock music scene. Here he is referencing a musical piece written almost 200 years ago. And of course I can't play it on YouTube. For the time it was definitely a piece that was very innovative. And I think this idea of a musician going on a trip, writing a piece inspired by that, writing music based on someone you love in an obsessive way. The inspirations of music is still in many 
ways kind of the same. Sure, like the medium, the instruments, the sound, everything is different, but it's interesting how a lot of the themes are still quite the same. The next theme I want to talk about is this theme around 1960s sartorialism. So you can definitely see there's a lot of looks that just really remind me of like a John Lennon Beatles figure. This from D scene, Hedy Slamon's Symphony Fantastique for Celine marks a return to sophisticated tailoring, drawing on the sartorial elegance of the 1960s and the romanticism of the 19th century. Slamon's designs feature frock coats, three button suits, and hand embroidered waistcoats crafted from luxurious materials like silk, cashmere, and vicuña. The collection, dominated by matte black, satin, and lacquered finishes, reflects Slamon's signature style and his ability to blend historical influences with contemporary fashion. Again, when I see this, be it the pants, the boots, the sunglasses, the styling, the shaggy hair, I think it's interesting because in general we have seen this shift. While there's been one side of like luxury fashion where the quality of the design and the make of the design wasn't really an emphasis, in recent years we've seen this shift towards quality focused design. While he's had definitely lots of more relaxed collections, laid back collections, these looks are definitely more put together. It's definitely like a reference to the 1960s and this kind of overall more gentlemanly sort of style with the three piece suits. What was very interesting about the last women's collection, we saw this theme of the 1960s, that kind of mod style for women. We're seeing this reflected on the men's side. This from NSS Magazine. Around music, the sartorial identity of the mods and their extremely tight suits was built from music itself. The concept of psychedelia was born, which rockers of the Los Angeles scene then applied to real life by consuming things that I don't want to quote in the desert. And I think what's interesting is 200 years later, 60 years later, a lot of the themes in music and art are kind of still the same. And then the final theme that I want to talk about is Hollywood cinema. What we're seeing here are these sort of like Hollywood film tropes. The intro with the helicopters, the jukebox, the Cadillacs. There's this Western theme, the cowboys. I think this Western cowboy has been going on in fashion recently. And throughout the film, we have this young cowboy riding in the desert. This is something Eddie has referenced heavily in the past before. In 2013, he had this photo series of young cowboys. And you just look at his fashion in general, even what is available to purchase online, be it the boots, the belts, the denim. There is that Western tinge we are seeing at Celine. It's not totally obvious. Now, if we talk about my five favorite looks, this collection to me has an overall theme of black. When I see the Cadillacs, I just think of a funeral. I don't know, that's just what I think, but Eddie also does black. Now it wasn't totally black, but this kind of did feel like a little bit like a swan song. Maybe I could be wrong, but this one look, and it's kind of a simple look in general, but it really feels like that kind of mod style. It makes me think of like John Lennon or the Beatles. And it's this look here with this collarless jacket and this turtleneck pretty simple, nothing really over the top. It just makes me think of like a modern day John Lennon. And again, a lot of the models just look like they were renewed members of the Beatles. There are a lot of blazers throughout this collection, coats without lapels called frock coats. I'll actually want to try to recreate this. I feel like it can be men or women, just this very simplified coat. Now the next look, here we have this gold glittering coat. It really just stands out, almost feels like it doesn't belong, like it's just very out of place against this Western landscape. This is that like rock star energy coat for somebody that has stage presence, for that somebody that wants the spotlight on them, this is that coat. I could definitely see some like indie musician to some K-pop musician wearing this. And if let's say gold wasn't your thing, we have this glittering, it looks like it's a hound's tooth print, giving more of like a silver or like a black and white kind of effect. He really does like to make these opulent over the top coats that there's probably only a few of these made and these are those special pieces. Next we have this piece which is really interesting. We have this sequin cape. This really reminds me a lot of looks that we saw from the recent women's line, the fall winter side. There were a lot of capes but here we're seeing capes for men and this theme of capes for men is very much present throughout this whole collection. Celine has done capes a few times but a lot of these capes really did remind me of the Dior fall winter. I think 
it's 2005 or 2006. I forget the collection. I forget which year it is, but there were a lot of capes. The focus was on more so formal wear, as well as I think the ad campaign. I don't know if it was for that collection. It looks like it was in the desert. It definitely made me think of that collection from like 20 years ago, but as well as it made me think of the recent women's wear collection. I also just want to say with these films, well, you know, the editing can be like really quick and fast. One thing I do like over, I would say some of the live shows is I do like that you're able to see the product a lot more. Although sometimes the editing is a little bit too quick. Sometimes with these darkened music clubs, it's a little bit hard to see all the details Details. We can get a clear shot of how a lot of these pieces look in natural light And then the final look I want to talk about is this cage leather jacket. It has this mesh effect I feel like this has been a trend we're seeing in fashion this cage metal I don't know what to call it. Anyways, I thought it was really interesting on this jacket Probably would be like really expensive I don't even want to like think about the prices of a lot of these pieces So yes, that's pretty much the collection and then the film kind of ends where the cars meet the final model these four Cadillacs and the sun is setting and then the jukebox starts to smoke and it goes on fire and it makes me think that this is perhaps the end of an era maybe this is Eddie Slaman's last collection at Celine it does feel a little bit somber it does feel a little bit darker it does feel like it's almost like a funeral perhaps this is the final chapter of Celine personally I find this news still a little bit shocking to me I know that Celine as a brand is doing very well again nothing has been confirmed but it does feel like it very well may be true Anyways, let me know what you think. Thank you so much for joining me in another video and I hope to see you in the next one.